Uh, hi, uh, thanks a lot for coming to my talk. So I will be talking about uh, watching a GRM driver uh, on an 64 board. This is a talk. I have a lot to say. I will not be able to say everything that I want to say about GRM because this is a very big subject. But yeah. So first of all, I am uh, Manuel Vado and manuelfreebz.org. I'm a FreeBSD user since 2004, a source committer since 2016, and port committer since last year. Uh, so yeah, you can tell that I've taken a long time before doing some, some stuff on FreeBSD, but I've been using FreeBSD for a long time. Uh, I'm a freelance developer, uh, so if you have anything mostly related to ARM, but not exclusively, um, that you want to do with FreeBSD, don't hesitate to contact me. Big warning, uh, so I've been talking at BSD conference for four years now, each time a different subject, and I still have that kind of slide. I'm still a new. Uh, when I start to do something on FreeBSD for whatever uh, reason, uh, this is usually something that I, that I don't know at all. Uh, I do that for learning, etc. So if you have some question at the end, maybe I will be able to answer. I'm not sure. Um, so first, let me clear some confusion, <coughs> some classic confusion about DRM. Uh, so for everyone, DRM means 3D driver. Uh, did I do a 3D driver? No. Uh, DRM is not only for 3D acceleration. And I will say more about that later, but yeah, no, I didn't do uh, 3D driver. Does it mean video decoding acceleration? No. Um, on ARM, both the 3D GPU and the video decoding uh, is usually not handled by the same, um, the same IP, the same logic as the video pipeline. So video decoding is not something that we will be talking about in this talk. A uh, little bit of history of video, video on ARM. For FreeBSD, uh, in August 2012, we had a uh, frame buffer for the Raspberry Pi that was committed by Gonzo. So it's just a basic frame buffer. You cannot change the resolution. Um, it expects uh, the bootloader to set up the frame buffer before. Uh, I don't think we support uh, up plug of monitor. So if you boot your Raspberry Pi, without an HDMI, HDMI connector plugged in, and you plug it uh, after FreeBSD has booted, you won't have a frame, uh, a frame buffer, etc. We have a, another frame buffer on some weird ARM32 uh, chip. I think I've deleted this code uh, maybe a year ago, but yeah, we used to have a frame buffer on this. Um, 2016, Jared Deer uh, committed this uh, Arduino Display Gen 1. Uh, this was just a uh, frame buffer also. Um, it uses some modification for, the, for some file you used to boot on the ARM, some DTS. Uh, after a while, I just didn't want it to keep the patch around, etc. So, the code is still there, but you cannot really use it. Uh, I don't think it will be very hard to adapt to the newer files, but yeah, no one seems to be motivated to do that, so yeah. And 2016 in December, we have our first DRM driver for the NVIDIA Tegra. This, is done well, this work was done by uh, Eman, Michel uh, Melun. Uh, so this was the first and only DRM driver for a number of in FreeBSD. And to the 2018, I added EFI frame buffer for RT64. Um, so EFI frame buffer is good because it provides a video boot for every board that where the bootloader uh, set up a frame buffer for us. Um, so yeah, I still need to do that for ARM32, but yeah, I don't have the time for now. So, uh, why making a DRM driver? First, it's fun. Um, most of the time, watching a driver is mostly boring. You read some documentation, 
and yeah, after a while it was you have some lead blinking or whatever. Um, this one is more fun because you have video. You're very excited. It's the first time you see video that you produced. So yeah. The big question is why not porting the driver from Linux? Linux have a lot of driver, a lot of DRM driver for almost every onboard. And well, the thing is that porting all the embedded framework, when well, the framework using embedded Linux, will be very, very hard. Uh, Linux has its own function to do GPIO, pin, pin mixing, uh, the clocks. Uh, on ARM, you control every clock on the system. And doing a framework for adapting every Linux framework to the FreeBSD one, it's not impossible, but it would be very hard, very boring to do. So we yeah. are. What I mean by this sentence, I don't want FreeBSD to become Linux, is it's not because we can mostly run unmodified driver from Linux that we should just do it for every device. Uh, we are still on a, a different OS, and having our own driver makes sense, at least for me. Also, all the DRM driver, um, the ARM DRM driver are GPL licensed. I, so it would not be possible to commit it into base, and we won't think we want things in base for a lot of reasons. Uh, the main reason is that some, um, some bootloader uh, don't set up the video for us, so we have to do everything. And it will mean, for example, if you uh, boot on a board that don't have video support in the bootloader, you will need to do, uh, you need to attach a serial console, download some package, etc., and then you could do everything from the HDMI monitor or uh, on the LCD or whatever. I want people to just download the FreeBSD image, put it on the SD card, booting, and they have HDMI input. And again, it's fun. Um, so for, for those of you who don't know how DRM driver is handled on the x86 on FreeBSD, uh, starting from FreeBSD 12, the so DRM driver are no longer in base. And everything is in the uh, is in ports and package. Um, I don't know exactly the reason, the official reason, uh, on why they did that, but um, it wouldn't be possible to import them in base right now because they still use a lot of GPL code uh, directly copied from Linux. Uh, so it's okay to put them in ports and somebody, but it would not be okay to. To, uh, to have them in base. Um, the problem is that it still uses uh, the Linux KPI, so that's the framework adaptation from Linux kernel function to FreeBSD one. It still uses uh, the Linux KPI from base, so you still need to have your ports and your kernel a bit in sync. Uh, like if you commit a new function in the Linux KPI in base, you have to update the DRM driver in ports to handle that. Uh, for me, it's a bit of a mess. So currently, there is three ports that exist, one for FreeBSD current, one for 11.2, and one for 12.0. And 12.1 would be fun, I think, um, because every port and package are built from the previous version. So package for 12.1 will be built against 12.0 which still have an old Linux KPI. So people will install 12.1, and they will need to create another new port, specifically for 12.1. So that's a mess, and that's why I won't think in base. Uh, you will have everything synchronized, etc. cetera. Uh, so why did I choose to work on a winner? Why not Raspberry Pi? Apparently, there are uh, popular for some reason, I don't really know why. Uh, well, there is no doubt. You have a, an open source uh, 3D driver, but you have no docs for the HDMI controller, you have no docs for the DSi, so that's a display serial interface for LCD. I've asked uh, Raspberry Pi and the pilot uh, answer me. Um, then uh, Ben Widowski, uh, an Intel employee, 
who used to work with um, Eric Arnold, who is currently doing the GM driver for Linux, for Raspberry Pi. Uh, ask him, and he said that no, the docs are not available and Broadcom are not willing to share them. So the only docs that you have is the Linux driver, which is GPL license. Uh, why not Rockchip? Because we start to have a correct port on Rockchip, etc. And that's why it's the same. There is no docs. At least when I started to look at DRM, I couldn't find any docs. Uh, I know of a doc for an older um, another version of their display engine, and it, it seems to be a bit, of a, a, bit, a bit of the same as the new one, so maybe someday we look at it more closely. So, what do we learn? Well, there is dots. Uh, except for the HDMI uh, transmitter, uh, but this doc exists on another manual, on the NXP IMX6. IMX6. So, yeah, you have three PDF open, but at least you have everything documented. At least for HDMI, I don't know if the Arduino docs are enough for other outputs. Uh, yeah? Just to clarify, when you say docs, you're talking about the graphics processor unit docs? Yeah. Where Raspberry Pi made something up. What about the other chips? What GPU do they have? Uh, or we all use a uh, Mali GPU from ARM. So it's the standard ARM one? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, this sort is not focused on the GPU part, just on the display part. Um, also, the good target hardware, there's a Pine64, Pinebook, Pantab, Pinephone, etc. So yeah, find the common denominator on, the, on all those boards. Um, and all the Arduino socks are mostly the same uh, for every generation. So doing a display driver for this SOC will be very easy uh, to add support for other SOC. So then we cover a huge amount of boards. So how do you even start doing a DRM driver? Um, to back in August, I started doing a VT driver, so just a simple frame buffer, etc. Just to familiarize myself with the hardware, I had some things that worked correctly. And when I had a result, I just trashed everything because I didn't want to commit that. Uh, because I was sure that if I had something that kind of worked, uh, committed to it, I would never have the motivation to do a DRM driver. And I really wanted a DRM driver. Uh, but at least I was, uh, I played a little bit with the hardware, so I knew, I knew that. Uh, that I could uh, manage to write every register correctly, etc. Then I took the DRM ports and I make it complete on M64, just to see if it was a, a good solution to start uh, on that. And yeah, after that, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I watched some talk from Linux developer on uh, DRM and KNS. Um, so yeah, it, I knew a little bit more about the API, etc., but not that much. And after a while, um, in early September, Michel contacted me and said that he had a more or less uh, sync version with uh, 4.19 SU1 Linux and that it was working with this Tegra DRM player. Um, he said, yeah, just give me a little bit of time. I need to, uh, to do a little modification, but I will publish uh, the code. Then I watched again some talks, and at the same time I read this uh, DRM driver because it was um, uh, BSD ISON, so like, I could look at it. That's like a lot. And in early December I managed to add a skeleton driver that survived mod test. Uh, mod test is a really useful program from libdrm that will query everything about your driver. Uh, DRM is calls a lot of function of your, of your driver, so I had filled every part that I should implement. So I'm talking about DRM, KMS, etc. What's that? Um, so DRM means Direct Rendering Manager. It's an API uh, to when it was um, created, it was only for 3D driver. And you have some, something called UMS user mode uh, setting. So all the resolutions, the 
display pipeline, etc., was configured by the username program, like the XOR. This has a lot of problem for uh, the, the the biggest problem is that you needed to give access to hardware directly to username, which was not really great. So at one point, uh, they came up with a new API called KLS kernel mode setting. And now the username asks the kernel to uh, retrieve all the possible configurations, or all your resolution, all the pipeline. Do you have a, a what uh, connector do you have? Do you have a HDMI connector, DVI connector, etc. And it just asks the kernel to configure the display pipeline a certain way. So this is a very simplified version of the DRM stack. Um, there is no no 3D involved in that, but basically you have your XORG that talks with uh, libdrm that we talk with the kernel either uh, with the KMS API or the Gem API. Gem is just a buffer object, a memory object that holds some uh, pixels. Uh, and then the KMS stack will talk to your driver, which will talk to the hardware engine. So this is what the display pipeline looks like. Um, so starting from the left, you have some DRM front buffer. Uh, those are just memory objects that also pixels. They are tied to what is called a DRM plane, which just uh, represents a rectangle on the screen. So that could be your whole screen, or maybe just a window, or whatever. Um, the reason that you have different uh, frame buffer, that you can have multiple frame buffer for a plane, is some uh, color encoding, like uh, YUV, etc. Uh, use different uh, buffer, different object for each uh, pixel values. Uh, and then the plane will just blend them together, or whatever. Um, each plane is tied to a DRM CRTC. CRTC means CRT uh, cathode ray tube controller. Uh, so the big string that you had back in the days. Um, which then talk to an encoder. An encoder will convert a pixel, uh, some pixel from one format to another format. I will go in detail in for everything, uh, for every one of them uh, after. So yeah, the encoder is tied to a DRM bridge. And the DRM bridge is tied to a DRM connector. The DRM connector is just a physical connector like HDMI or whatever. For the all winner, uh, this is uh, this is how it works. You have what is called a mixer, uh, which will create an image based on multiple plates. Uh, and then you can put to a timing controller uh, that will then convert the data either to HDMI for the HDMI controller or to RGB uh, direct output, uh, display serial interface, etc. And the RT mixer looks like that. Uh, so you have two of them, your mixer 0 and mixer 1. And the mixer zero can have uh, one video plane. Uh, so these are planes that can handle YUV format, etc. Uh, video formats that are really common in videos. And you can have up to three UI planes. Those are just some generic uh, RGB plane with some alpha value. And you can Google everything, uh, how the planes are blend. Uh, like if you have a plane on top uh, or a plane uh, behind another plane, etc. And the mixer one only have one video plane and one UI plane. So, for example, that means that if you are using the mixer one to have your uh, HDMI input, you will have only one plane that represents your display, uh, your big display, and then uh, every window is directly rather in this plane. But if you are playing a video, uh, the video player could use another plane that will uh, use uh, directly the video plane of the of the mixer. So, the from buffer just contains some properties and some memory objects, just some buffer. So, properties are with A, pitches, and offsets. Uh, the format, uh, so for the uh, how the pixel is encoded, etc. And the memory uh, are back with gem object. Uh, gem object is the scary, scary part of DRM, at least for me. Um, so when I started to look at some talk, uh, all the embedded 
Linux developer said, yeah, just use the uh, uh, DRM gen CMF function. I start to look at that. Um, things it uses a lot of uh, functions not implemented in Linux KPI. And after a while, I realized that well, the code was GPL and it was really uh, doing some low low level stuff on the VM system, etc. in Linux. So it would not be easy to port that to BSD. And Michel told me that his buffer object code for the Stegra driver was kind of close at how DRM GMCMA uh, works. So I just copy and paste his code. I don't know what the code is doing because, yeah, again, VM, something like that. I don't know anything about that. But yeah, I have now a BSD uh, implementation that every driver can use. So that's good. So the blend, as I said, just represents a display block. You can have different type. Primary is usually your desktop. Uh, so the main, uh, the main plane or the main image uh, that's shown on the screen. Overlay is just a plane that you can put everywhere on top of other plane. And you have some um, cursor uh, plane so for your mouse, uh, for your mouse cursor. To protect the coordinates of frame buffer associated to that, to that position, etc. Um, so yeah. On the Arduino, you don't have any cursor plane. So your mouse cursor will, most of the time, it will just, uh, it will just be part of the main, of the primary uh, DRM plane. Um, you could use one of the other uh, plane on the mixer to, to have the, the mouse cursor draw. Um, so the display mode contains the pixel clock. The pixel clock is uh, the speed at, uh, at which the pixel are outputted on the, on the screen. Um, I would just yeah, show that. It's not that scary, but yeah, every video uh, since VGA uh, are most likely the same. Your pixel flows from left to right, top to bottom, and only some part of the video is shown on the screen, but your signal, your signal, video signal is always uh, sending some stuff. So you, if you remember uh, configuring some mod line in X386, where you have big scary line, etc., that's what you are um, uh, 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 so, uh, explaining this line, uh, every so when when the pixels start to appear on the screen, uh, how many pixels is there, etc., etc. Um, a DRM CRTC just take pixels from multiple DRM plane and blend them together, so it will create the image that will be uh, rendered on the screen. It's tied to a display mode because it has to know the resolution of the, of the main input. And it will put pixels to a DRM encoder. And a DRM encoder just converts some pixels data from the internal uh, format that the CRTC uh, handle to another one. Uh, it could be TMDS for DVI or HDMI, it could be DSI for display serial interface, etc. So DRM bridge sits between an, an encoder and a connector. I honestly don't really know why uh, such thing exists. Um, like encoder doesn't have a function to disable or enable them, and you're supposed to use the DRM bridge. Um, but yeah, the relation between DRM bridge and DRM connector is not really clear for me. So I'm not even sure that my driver is correct uh, on that. I, didn't find any explanation at, for why it exists. And yeah, DRM connector it just represents an actual connector, so PGA, HDMI, or whatever. And it's only used to get the, the mod list, uh, so the mod um, that the monitor can handle. Uh, it will likely be read from the edit data uh, that just contains every mod that the display supports. So, 
Atomic KMS is something that was introduced in Linux maybe 4.4 or something like that. Um, things that if you update the mod and not the plan size, you will have some problem. Um, if you switch to a higher resolution, if you, and if you don't resize the planes as a frame buffer, etc., well, we have a very small image uh, on the screen, uh, etc. So, yeah, you have a lot of problems. And if you don't update the mods everywhere, uh, or if the mod fails to update on, on some part of the uh, of the pipeline, you will have some weird problem. Probably no video at all. So, uh, with Atomic KMS, what it does is that it will ask every part of the system to check if everything is okay, and if only one, uh, only one component says that no, I cannot handle this pixel format or this resolution or whatever, nothing is done. And if they all say, okay, uh, I can handle that, I can handle this format, I can handle this resolution, uh, the DRM will do an atomic commit and that will update everything on the same pass and you know that you will have a valid image at the end, uh, no weird format or whatever. So some advice for crazy people like me who wants to uh, write some DRM driver, uh, use mod test as I said for libdrm. Um, it will query everything that your driver exposes. Uh, after a while, you will not have kernel panics anymore or whatever. Um, and also, it helps when you are um, creating a, a driver for HDMI, for example, to get all the information on the monitor because it will query everything for you. Start doing a skeleton driver, a lot of free tests. And just start mod test, start XORG, and just see what, what is called in your driver. Um, having HDMI implemented in the bootloader is sometimes useful uh, because you don't have to do a very uh, big driver to handle HDMI. At first, I didn't have a driver for HDMI, but still had some video because I just made some fake driver that just say, okay, uh, I have this, uh, this mod uh, that I just written some modes that I use that uh, the monitor could handle. Uh, and yeah, my driver was just a fake driver. But it also hides problem because you are not sure if your driver is working because you write uh, every register correctly or if it's, just, uh, if it's just a leftover of the bootloader. So yeah. Start, start with HDMI enabled, but as soon as you are, as you think that your driver is correct, just disable video output in your bootloader and do another test. Well, for example, I still cannot have video without uh, HDMI enabled in bootloader. I probably missed one or two register writes that is needed, but I don't know which one. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, read BSD license driver. Uh, unfortunately, there is not a lot. Um, in Linux, only the Intel and the AMD are BSD license, and they are really, really, really big. Uh, but yeah, now you have my driver and uh, Michel driver. Michel driver is probably better to read because she seems to really know about DRM, unlike me. Uh, and I think. Uh, uh, Jared, the driver for NetBSD, is also uh, good to read. So, yeah. So, what's the current status? We have a DRM in sync with Linux 4.20. I'm still updating it, uh, updating it uh, time to time. There's still a bit of GPL uh, headers and code. I still need to clean that. Uh, I've started to take some code from OpenBSD. They recently updated the DRM driver from uh, uh, to be in sync with Linux 4.19. And yeah, they have everything BSD license, they rewrote a lot of things, so I'm stealing a lot of their code, so thanks to them. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we use a trim version of Linux KPI. Um, the thing is that Linux KPI is good if you want to directly import a Linux driver, but for us, 
we don't want to pretend to be Linux driver, so Linux API could work with us. So we remove all that uh, from the current Linux API. Um, we might rename it to DRM KPI and only focus on what DRM, what DRM expects to be present. We don't know. Uh, as I say, FDM outputs only work if you would send about it. I really need to work on that. So resolution cause some problem. Like if I switch to 720 by 536, I don't have any video signal. I don't know why. And also when I switch back to another resolution, I have um, like the pixel are way on the screen. I'm pretty sure this is a clock related problem because most of the time every problem that you have on ARM is clock related. So yeah. I see I have some problem with the video layer. Uh, like I use GStreamer, GStreamer to test. And if I uh, use a YUV format uh, that uses multiple frame buffer, so for the luminance and chrominance, so image is just weird, so I might just have missed some stuff. Um, the code is there on my GitHub tree. Uh, I have some which uh, patch for the pine book. I haven't committed that uh, on my tree. Um, I still have some weird problem, like if I boot with the HDMI connector attached on the pine book, uh, the kernel ends when it creates some the main frame buffer. I don't know why. Uh, and if I plug the, the HDMI monitor after that the kernel uh, is booted, I don't have any video on the HDMI output, but it sends some data. Uh, again, probably a clock uh, problem. I've actually seen um, PC class hardware do that. Where, do what? Um, like if the VGA <coughs> connector is not connected, on the video card, it might be outporting the HDMI or whatever, but subsequently connecting the VGA connector gets no signal from the console of BSD. Uh, no, it should work. I've I mean, seen that on multiple. When, when, I, when I plug my laptop on the uh, when I plug the HDMI on my laptop, uh, I didn't have to reboot or whatever. Well, I think some cards react to it automatically, but there are at least certain examples of hardware in, in the PC space. Okay. That do this. I'm pretty sure that if you use uh, Intel GRM driver, everything would be okay. I never had any problem, well, but... It's the console driver of BSD, so there's no uh, Intel it driver. Oh. Yeah, uh, the default 9 3 4 7 6 mode, but that's changed in the newer version of DRM. Mm. So if you don't have an output connected and you don't do certain things, then you won't get a uh, display coming back. So okay. it's something that changed in the version. Okay. Well. Um, some future work that I will do, I still don't have DRM Prime, so that will be needed for everything 3D related. Um, Michel took some code from some WIP NetBSD branch for, for that, uh, and it doesn't seem to work, I need to check with Michel. I might steal again from OpenBSD because they have everything. Uh, I don't know how it would be to adapt that. Uh, as you need to upgrade the DRM code from Linux, I really want to to be as close as Linux mainline. Uh, and for the Mali and Lima, which is a 3D uh, part, uh, Linux has the has the driver since uh, 5.1, I think. So I really need to be uh, at least sync with 5.1 to start uh, playing with Lima, uh, because having 3D. Uh, on the Pine Book or Pine 64 or whatever will be very, very good. Um, I didn't start to look at uh, MIPI DSI, uh, the display signal interface, the Pine tab from Pine 64, uh, have it screen on MIPI DSI, and a lot of other driver uh, boards uh, have that, so uh, we need to look. And I'll probably look at Rockchip one day. Uh, the new Pine Book Pro is with a rock chip SOC, so that would be good to have PSD running on that. But I don't know how hard it would be or if everything is properly documented. Uh, thanks a lot to those guys, Laurent Panchard, Maxime Ripa, and Boris Bozian. Um, they did a lot of talks about DRM and KMS that sent me a lot. Um, the weird thing is that all, all three are French like me. So maybe only French people are crazy enough to do and talk about DRM. I don't know. 
Uh, I, I honestly didn't find uh, the other talk not done by a French person. So yeah, well. Thanks a lot to Michelle. I'm honestly not sure that she that I would have started to work on DRM if he didn't start himself. Uh, so yeah, big thanks to him. Uh, of course, thanks to Matt Messi and Johannes for doing the DRM next month free BSD. Uh, Jared for his advice, uh, Vasily and James. Uh, Vasily and James are both uh, Linux developer and that works on the Arduino A64 uh, DRM driver. And when I have question and I don't want to read GPL code, I just ask them and they answer to me. So good. And thanks a lot to TL from Pan64 because he donated to me a lot of hardware. Uh, it's not that the hardware is very expensive, but I buy a lot of onboards and not having to buy some of them is always good. So thanks to him. Uh, last slide, we need more people doing some DRM graphics, whatever, uh, on every architecture on FreeBSD. If you want to help, uh, don't hesitate to contact me, even if you are not sure that you will be able to help. I mean, I'm just a dumb French people and I managed to have some video we put on the point 64, so you, get, you can help a lot. Thanks, and if you have any questions, yes? So you, read, uh, you mentioned in your talk um, the various DRM components. Do they all have to be part of the same driver, or does it build? They all have to be part of the same driver, yeah. Okay. I mean, just, uh, you, you mean uh, when you say driver, uh, driver like a uh, uh, so, so for for example, um, I have a PowerPC board that has a display interface unit on the mm -hmm. SSC, but like the um, the DBI, the EDID stuff is done through a thing I square C. Yeah. So they so, so, define it together. So. No, no. Right now, I think that my GM driver is maybe four or five different drivers, three busy drivers. Okay. Yeah. Like one for HDMI, like one for HDMI uh, uh, five, uh, one for the mixer, one for the timing controller, maybe another one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, they just have to be present, and uh, they just need to to be able to talk to each other. Like uh, the DRM CRTC will look at one point for its encoder, so you just need to have an interface between the the two drivers so they can talk. Okay. Yeah. I just want to comment that helpful in general. I might be working with you guys soon as I'm trying to get ProS with ARM builds and other you know, architectural builds and stuff. So. True. I just. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Um, so is the plan in FreeBSD, like up here, remove all the GPL bits from your DRMs? So is that then going to be the way FreeBSD goes to remove all the other stuff back from ports into base? Or? Is, only for ARM. Only for ARM. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it will be best for us if everything moved back to base. But I don't want to be the guy who does that. Uh, I don't want. I don't have a lot of time to do DRM uh, for x86. So we will do that for ARM for all drivers. But that's all. It's just a implication of work seems a bit sad. Mm. And. There's no real reason, at least that, at least from my point of view, that if a package is in ports, it can't be put into a image so that's there on boot ahead of time. I mean, I know it's not always that's not been the traditional. Yeah, way, but, but at least not for official FreeBSD image. Uh, also, one thing, well, I mean, one thing I did not say is that uh, on ARM you have the DTS files that describe the hardware, yeah. and they need to be in sync with the kernel. And since they describe all the video components, etc., it's better to have everything in sync. It's just easier. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could do a, an external package that people could install or whatever, but it's just easier to have everything in, in the kernel in sync. That's fine. I'm not talking. I just wanted to, you know. So, yeah, I hope it's answered your question. No more questions? Okay, thank you.